There is no question that I do my fair job in uh, keeping the delivery companies employed. <laughs> uh, as you can see by the tape and of course uh, the title of the video, I got a box here from Sen Racing. Now I've got a good idea what's on the inside. Aha! Exactly what we're hoping for in the type of climate that I have. Check it out. Brand new spiky tires. Get the box out of the way. Aha! Looks like we got some springs in here as well. One, two, three, and four. Very, very cool. These are the new Sen tires, I guess. The spiky ones. Also, a set of springs for Everett's truck and a set of springs for mine. Longer springs from what I understand for my uh, shocks. So these are the new Sen compound tires. Fairly soft. They are breathable in the rims. There's the rims. A lot of mixed feelings on these rims uh, and the color of them. But they actually went away from the pure chrome look uh, into more of like, not like a rose gold, but it certainly has a bit of a red tint to it. A reddish brown. Look at that. So Sen Racing, when they came out with the new Reaper, the one seven scale monster truck I've been working with lately, uh, or the Colossus XL, they actually came uh, with the tires that the older model of Colossus tire came with. Uh, and they work really well, but in the slippery, slick, uh, and loose mud kind of conditions that we have out here, or uh, for the dirt racetrack I have, this will certainly give me a ton more traction. Check it out. Beautiful. These tires are enormous, my friends. Here, I'll get the Reaper up on the uh, on the table so we can have a look. It is truly a monster. <laughs> Uh, okay, so standard wheel nuts on the inside here. Uh, they are not serrated nuts, so if you don't tighten them up, they have a tendency to back off. I really do like these tires that the Reaper already comes with. Uh, these have lots of bite. They do have lots of traction. Uh, but this here will actually give us more surface area touching the ground, uh, will, which will give us better overall traction on the dirt. Now, I do use a breaker bar. You guys can use a variety of different things to tighten it up. Uh, torque wrench <laughs> or even the included wheel nut remover. Uh, I find the extra uh, um, fulcrum advantage I get from using a breaker bar it definitely gives me uh, a tighter fit. As you can see what I was talking about non serrated so it doesn't really kind of lock itself in place and if you lose one of these when you're out on the track or on the trail or in the forest man having something that color on the trail is hard to see so I hate losing them and I always make sure to swap them out. Now I could get right onto the tires right here and just fit these bad boys on here. But when I have this apart, I actually want to have a look at the new springs. Now the springs that have been sent to me are actually longer than the stock ones here, which is going to give me more ride height because the weight of a 6S battery in the back actually uh, has considerable amount of uh, a droop in the back suspension, right? So a longer spring, you can see I actually have quite a bit of preload already loaded up with the ring, uh, but I'm gonna replace it with these springs right here, which will lift up the truck considerably. We'll have a look at the stock size as well as the longer ones, just so you guys have an idea. Now, fortunately, because uh, the way these shocks are assembled, I can actually remove the spring perch from the bottom and I don't have to remove the entire shock just to get the new spring on. Just back off this one screw. Remove it. I'm actually gonna remove some of the preload right now just from that top ring, the top perch. Then I'm going to compress the spring itself, remove the bottom perch like this, and then just slide off that spring. 
Here is the stock one. I made sure to turn it the same way as the longer upgraded one. Uh, not, you know, if you look at them, there's not too much of a difference until you actually count the coils. So not including the bottom uh, perch coil, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the top. Uh, uh, the bottom doesn't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the top. So we're actually getting a bit more of resistance in the longer one, which will result better in the uh, in the extra added weight from the uh, two 3S batteries if you are running the six cell in this Monster Reaper. So just going in reverse from what I did, I'll take the new uh, spring, compress it, put it on the bottom shock mount, the perch, and then just go ahead and re-tighten up the screw. Now, I was watching Aussie RC Playgrounds. They actually went ahead and moved the shock in one more, uh, just one hole in, just so they could actually also help their ride height. Uh, they were doing some big air in a video they did the other day, and they, uh, I'm gonna take that advice because I also love my big air off the Superman ramp, and I wanna have as much cushion on the landing as possible for my big truck here. With the shock in place, I'll go ahead and just fit the new tire. Put the wheel nut back on. Give her a crank with the old 23 here. Now I've already just hand tightened it and then I'm just gonna go a quarter turn. And that is a nice tight tire. I'll go ahead and just change out the other three springs and those three tires. So there we go, a very simple upgrade uh, that definitely raised the back end of my truck. I don't have the batteries in right now, they're charging, uh, but definitely more firm. I don't have to have as much preload in the shocks and those tires will give me much better surface area, especially when everything is melting. Now don't get me wrong, the original tires are awesome in mud. They fling mud and water high, far and wide, uh, but different types of tires for different terrain is definitely necessary when you're getting into bigger trucks like this especially when you're doing high speed corners it's great to have as much flat surface area as possible now what I'm doing right now just going from the back of the truck looking down the frame rails on either side somebody was asking me because uh, they thought it was thinner frame rails you know had we seen any kind of bowing or crushing uh, in this extended long frame and the answer is no everything is nice and straight um, we did have quite a few lawn dart experiences where the nose came down in front just due to bad driving or bad uh, uh, conditions you know uh, driving in the snow and the ice it, it really doesn't allow for a lot of traction but hopefully now we have a bit more look how long this chassis is <laughs> pretty amazing my friends I think we should pop the body on and have a look at the final product hey eh? there we are what a beast I love the way it's sitting now everything is much higher uh, I don't actually have a lot of preload in the front because I like it to be a little bit soft. Um, if it wasn't cold out right now, where I live, it's still winter time, of course, I would be switching the shock oil out to be something a little bit thicker. I find that, that stock, it comes a little bit on the thin side, but really it just depends on where you live. For winter, it's been awesome for me because anytime you get it outside, the, the shock fluid just uh, thickens up anyway. Um, but in the summertime, I would definitely definitely uh, advise on thickening it up. Oh man, those springs in the back definitely make a huge difference. Look at this. It's just a powerhouse, man. 
Now, one thing I know they're working on right now are the battery trays. They're a little bit small to fit uh, two 3S LiPos in there. It's a bit of a challenge. Uh, we've had a bit of an issue with them coming out, you know, on a, on a hard landing or something like that. Connectors become undone, um, but really not a big deal. It, it seems that Sen is listening. Everybody was switching out the, uh, the springs for different types of springs, and at least Sen came out and said, okay, well, we're gonna actually offer uh, longer springs so here we go the tires look awesome like I said I'd love to take it out right now and run it for you uh, but the batteries are charging right now so make sure to tune in do all that neat stuff that I always tell you to do at the end of our videos and we will see you in the next episode of RC adventures okay my friends see you next time Oh, 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 one more thing before I go, I forgot to mention. People were asking in my last video where I was actually bashing the Reaper pretty hard in the water, uh, how come my tires actually looked deformed as I was doing high jumps off of my Superman ramp? And the reason why is because you can see on the inside I took some tape, covered up the breather holes, right? So normally tires like this, when you squeeze them, you can hear them breathing <laughs> where there's air coming from inside and out. Normally when it expands, the rubber allows air to go in through these breather holes on the inside of the rims. But because I was running in the water, uh, I covered these up and they can't really expand the way they're supposed to. So you'll actually see in that video that these tires were kind of misshaping. But as a result of me taping them up, I don't have any water on the inside of these. So so I can use them again and again and I don't have to worry about having any kind of chocolate milk muddy uh, type of waters in there. Uh, there you go. So <laughs> I knew people were asking. I had to throw that in the end of the video.